Hello everybody, I am Narendra Sharma and welcome to Shake Hand with Life YouTube channel. In this video, I will discuss about the 8 pillars of TPM. And what are these 8 pillars of TPM? Focused improvement, autonomous maintenance, plan maintenance, training and education, early management, quality maintenance, office TPM and safety, health and environment pillar. These are the 8 pillars of TPM and in this video I will discuss in brief each pillar of the TPM. The foundation is continuous improvement. With the help of continuous improvement you can uh, stand 8 pillars of TPM and uh, create a world class manufacturing with the help of these 8 pillars. So, the learning contents of this video as you know that the 8 pillars of TPM. Along with this, uh, one more thing I will discuss with you, the integrated system of 8 pillars of TPM. How can you achieve the maximum performance of a manufacturing industry with the help of human machine interaction using the 8 pillars of TPM. Now before heading in this video, I request you that please subscribe Shake Hand With Life YouTube channel and press the bell icon. So whenever there is a new video uploaded on the channel, you will get a notification. You can also watch variety of videos on this channel such as 7 QC tools, IPS or lean manufacturing, MSA, FMEA, all these videos, CP and CPK analysis you can watch on this channel. Now starting with the first pillar of the TPM and this is focused improvement. Now what focused improvement says, under the focused improvement pillar, you need to prioritize the projects on which basis uh, considering the losses in each area, line and machine. So prioritize the project on the basis of loss generation in each area, assembly line or for the equipment. Then improvements are implemented and what is the methodology? The methodology is PDSA cycle and what is the PDSA cycle? The PDSA cycle this is plan, do, study and act. So under the plan section first identify the opportunity that means the loss area where the losses are generating then analyze the process existing process develop the optimal solution and come to the do section in the do section work out and implement the countermeasures and come to the study section after taking the countermeasures study the results and when you study the results if you find that the results are uh, motivating, then standardize the solution and establish the controls. You are getting the results, then standardize the solutions and establish the controls. Then review your project, how much you achieved and plan for the next project. So this is the way you can implement the focused improvement. Now, goals and responsibilities, the goals are under the focused improvement, you need to eliminate all the breakdowns, quality defects and every other kind of loss that are generating in the process or the uh, production system. Achieve the maximum level of operational equipment effectiveness above 85%. Minimum standard is 85%, the OEE 
standard is 85 percent and you have to achieve as much as possible of the standard of the operational equipment effectiveness. The responsibilities are the technical staff, maintenance people or the line leaders or the production people, operator, uh, the production engineer, the maintenance engineers, they can share the responsibility for the focused improvement. Now what activities are included under the focused improvement? Identify the 16 big losses. What are these losses? Shutdown loss, management loss, motion loss, line organization loss, logistic loss, when you send or deliver the product to your customer, uh, in uh, that process the loss is generated, uh, the resource consumption during the logistic and the measurement and adjustment loss, yield loss, energy loss, consumable loss, breakdown loss, setup and adjustment loss, cutting tool and replacement loss, startup loss, minor stops and idling loss, speed loss when the machine not able to achieve its standard speed that considered as the speed loss, quality defect and rework loss. All these 16 losses must be identified under the focused improvement and try to eliminate these losses. Calculate and set the target for operational equipment effectiveness and unit resource consumption. Analyze the problem and review possible causes. First analyze the problem. What is the impact of the problem? What are the effects are coming because of the problem? What is the source of the problem? And then review the possible causes. Why the problem is happening? Perform preventive maintenance analysis. You need to do the preventive maintenance analysis under the focused improvement so that the losses could not generate in the process of the production uh, production system and pursue the focused improvement to achieve ultimate performance of the production system. You need to continue this focused improvement till you are not getting the ultimate performance or the expected performance from your production system. These activities are included in the focused improvement. This is the first pillar of the TPM. Now come to the second pillar of the TPM. This is autonomous maintenance. This is another very important pillar of the TPM. Under the autonomous maintenance, what is autonomous maintenance? At shop floor, you have to Prepare your operator so that he can look after his or her own machine by himself or herself and perform routine checks just such as the lubricating, replacing parts, doing simple repairs, detecting abnormalities promptly, checking precision and so forth. So forth. All these activities can be done by the operator by himself. So you make the operator competent under the autonomous maintenance and in the office each employee look after his or her office equipment such as the printer and computer or any other equipment available in the office and he has to improve anything that is not perfect if he find something is not perfect then he has to improve that thing focus on cleaning the work environment such as doing 5S. Apply the 5S principles and clean, make the environment clean as much as possible. Eliminate wuss, that is waste, unevenness and stain. All these things must be eliminated by the people working in the office. So to perform with full efficiency in the office. This is the brief description of the autonomous maintenance and each pillar of the TPM. 
Now, goals and responsibility. The goals are develop equipment competent operators. You have to make the operator uh, so much competent that he or she can able to take care his or her equipment by himself or herself and empower the operator to look after his own equipment. This implies that the organization make the operator as treat the operator as an owner of the equipment so that he himself can take care of the equipment and the responsibility the responsibility uh, can be shared uh, by the operator office executives line leaders and what activities are included under the autonomous maintenance there are seven steps to execute the autonomous maintenance the first is initial cleaning the operator can do initial cleaning at the uh, on the on the equipment to make clean and shine the equipment identification of contaminated sources and hard to access area he has to identify the sources that can uh, 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 through which the dirt can enter into the machine and uh, that area where the cleaning is uh, very much difficult so these area must be identified by the operator some provisional standards of cleaning or uh, maintenance can be uh, <coughs> ascertained by the operator or uh, write down by the operator through which the maintenance can be done and then general inspection uh, take care how to take care of the machine how to clean the machine how to lubricate the machine some general inspection uh, can be done by the operator then the autonomous inspection this is something like a making a schedule for the inspection scheduled inspection how the operator uh, weekly maintenance uh, done the weekly maintenance for the machine or by month for the machine he has to make uh, some schedule for the maintenance or inspection for the machine then summarize what activities he think uh, that good for the machine he has to standardize these activities some standard operating procedures must be uh, write down by himself uh, by uh, by him and then come to the self full self management and he becomes so much competent that he can able to maintain the machine by himself completely so these activities are included under the autonomous maintenance now come to the third pillar of the tpm the third pillar is plan maintenance sometime it is called effective maintenance therefore the effective or plan maintenance is it is the responsibility it is the core responsibility of the maintenance department and uh, the objective is reducing the number of breakdowns in the production system and extending the useful life of the machine parts and uh, managing the spare parts controlling maintenance costs by doing preventive maintenance and what are the goals and responsibilities the goals are improve the effectiveness of the maintenance department uh, identify the areas where the eight big losses could be generated then what are the eight big losses these eight big losses are breakdown loss setup and adjustment loss cutting tool replacement loss startup loss minor stops and idling loss speed loss quality defect and rework loss shutdown loss here the eight big losses and the focused improvement the target is 16 big losses but for the maintenance team first they have to target the eight big losses and the responsibility can be shared by the maintenance personnel team leaders production or assembly team leaders production and employees from other departments to support the maintenance or production 
people. Now, what activities are included under the effective maintenance? The maintenance department need to plan day to day actions for plan maintenance and predictive maintenance. And the improvements can be done to extend the equipment life. And uh, they can also do the spare part management. Then they can also do the failure analysis to reduce the risk of failure of the machine and uh, corrective maintenance so that the problem cannot recur. Then lubrication management is also under the comes under the effective maintenance. Now come to the fourth pillar of the TPM, which is training and development. And what this pillar says under this pillar the organization has to find out what type of knowledge and skills required for the people those who are working in different areas in order to get the job done effectively so and then assess them according to the requirement assess the skills of the people against these requirement and give them the necessary training and how would the training can be provided? Set a maintenance training facility on the shop floor and use it to develop multi-skilled uh, multi -skilled operators so that they can do the autonomous maintenance for their machines and do different maintenance activities. Train the operators so that they never make operating or repair errors. The operator must be trained in such a way that they cannot make any kind of operating mistake or repairing errors. Now goals and responsibilities included boost the expertise of operators and maintenance personnel. So the objective of the training and development is boosting the expertise of operators and maintenance personnel, also boosting the moral of the operator. And the responsibilities can be shared by the maintenance personnel, HR personnel, and production personnel. Maintenance personnel and production personnel can provide the training, and some training can also be provided by the external trainer. And HR personnel decide the schedule of the training and the place of the training in the organization. Then, what activities are included? under the training and development. Under the basic maintenance training, cleaning and lubrication is one of the main activity, then maintenance of transmission components, leak prevention, maintenance of hydraulic and pneumatic equipment, maintenance of electrical control, all these activities are uh, included under the maintenance, basic maintenance training. And the training for continuous improvement. This is another aspect of the training to boost the understanding of the operator about his or her machine and uh, reduce the wastage during the process and can improve the process uh, through the uh, through continuous improvement projects. So the waste minima waste minimization. The training must be provided for the continuous improvement, uh, for the waste minimization, process improvement, managerial skill excellence for senior management, and some tools uh, are there, such as the 5S, Kaizen, QC tools, FMEA, MSA, SPC, etc. All these tools, uh, training uh, tools can be uh, taught under the training to the senior management or supervisor level so that they can uh, start the projects for continuous improvement uh, for the process improvement. Now come to the fifth pillar of the TPM. This is early management and what is the early management? The early management says the the 
simultaneous developing the equipment needed and manufacturing process with the product design. The early management starts or you can say the early maintenance starts with the uh, with the conceptualizing of the equipment needed for the product manufacturing and the manufacturing process. So when the, an organization conceptualizing the design of the product at the same time the organization has to conceptualize the design for the equipment and manufacturing process so that a smooth manufacturing process for a particular product can be developed. Eliminate the design flaws in new or remodeled equipment at planning, development and design stages and practicing maintenance prevention problem free startup. So all the design flaws can be uh, must be eliminated with the help of early management. The early management start right from the design of the equipment. Therefore, all the flaws, design flaws must be eliminated starting from the planning, development and design stages and practicing the, uh, by practicing the maintenance prevention to uh, set up a, uh, to start a problem free startup. Then reduce the new product development lead time uh, as well as achieving vertical startup. So when you uh, do early management, then this will help to reduce the development lead time of the product starting from the design of the product and enter it into the market. So this way the early management help, helps you to reduce the lead time of the product. And the goals are, therefore the goals are reduce product development and prototyping lead times, reduce equipment development, design and fabrication lead times, achieve stable commissioning of new products and equipment. And the responsibilities can be shared by the research and development staff, production and engineering staff and the maintenance staff. And what activities are included under the early management for the maintenance prevention, set development and design targets, set manufacturing standards, set quality standards, set the standards for operation, set the standards for maintenance and set the reliability standards to minimize the risk of failure of the equipment. So all these standards must be set for to achieve the zero maintenance condition for the production system or the equipment. Starting from the development design, then uh, what type of manufacturing facilities is there, then what are the quality standards, so zero defect standards uh, could be there and uh, what are the standard operating procedures or the methodology uh, adopting by the operator to uh, produce the product through the equipment. And the standards for maintenance, what maintenance standards are there? Uh, so the maintenance standards, that means the zero maintenance standards uh, could be there. And the reliability standards that, uh, as I told you, the reducing the risk of failure of the equipment. Other activities included the life cycle costing and elimination of the problems uh, starting from the design, drawing, prototyping, fabrication, test running and startup stages for the equipment. Then perform design reviews. Perform the design reviews for the manufacturing uh, process and uh, the equipment for the equipment. Now come to the sixth pillar of the APM and this pillar is quality maintenance. What this pillar says, the aim of this pillar is to achieve the zero in process defects and zero customer complaint. By setting a and maintaining a zero defects condition uh, in the production system and such as 
the uh, with the help of okayoke mistake proofing or uh, dfme design fme or the process fme tries to prevent defective sperm being produced right in the first place so the quality maintenance tries to prevent the defectives right from the uh, the place where it starts manufacturing and prevents the defect generation instead of inspection or rework after manufacturing the product so the quality maintenance try to achieve the zero uh, defect condition with the help of uh, preventing the defectives and uh, prevents the defect generation instead of uh, reworking on the defects or segregation of the defective parts from the uh, quality parts now the goals and responsibilities are the goals are achieve a zero quality defects standard by sustaining correct equipment condition uh, correct equipment condition you can be understand with the help of zero maintenance condition uh, maintenance prevention preventive maintenance you can achieve the zero maintenance condition or correct equipment conditions and achieve the zero quality defect condition the responsibility can be shared by the quality assurance, de assurance department production engineering department research and development department and the maintenance department and the activities and quality activities under the quality maintenance are first you have to check the quality characteristics and the standards and investigate the existing quality defect phenomena what is the ex existing quality defect phenomena how the defects are defined and uh, what is the characteristics for the to set the defectives and defects then check the quality assurance conditions and conditions prevailing in process raw materials equipment and methods you need to check the quality assurance condition conditions for the process and the raw materials that are incoming into the industry and the equipment uh, what is the condition of equipment if uh, uh, it is able to achieve the zero defect condition or not or the methodology through which the uh, operator is running the machine then if any condition is unsatisfying then you need to identify that condition analyze what is the what are the bottlenecks and then remove or eliminate the bottlenecks and improve the the unsatisfied condition up to the satisfactory level and just the improvement establish correct 3m man machine method conditions and inspect the criteria and set the observable standards and minor monitor the trends set the standards uh, or the metric in such a way that you can able to measure them and monitor the trends whether you are improving or declining now come to the the seventh pillar of the tpa which is office tpa this is the supportive pillar for the production supportive pillar you can see that the next two pillars are the supportive pillar for the six uh, pillars of the TPM. So the office TPM under this pillar, you need to or you have to raise the efficiency and effectiveness of the administrative work through which you support the production and maintenance department. Use 5S in office to improve office conditions. Do small kaizen projects. Uh, to remove to reduce the administrative labor reduction uh, to administrative labor and identify the identify and eliminate the losses in purchasing distribution and warehousing and boosting the sales so with the help of small kaizen projects 
eliminate the losses in purchasing, distribution and warehousing. Introducing the CIM, Computer Integrated Management, to watch the improvement or the what is the required for which department uh, because uh, with the help of CIM the office can be connected to each department and can understand the requirement of each department how the office TPM can help or understand the requirements of each department especially production or maintenance department to implement the TPM across the organization. Now the goals and responsibility, the goals uh, included achieve zero functional losses, create highly efficient offices, provide effective services and support to the production department. So zero functional losses, efficient offices as so because the office TPM has to provide the support to production and maintenance department and the responsibility can be shared by the team leader, team members in sales and other indirect departments, accounts departments uh, can also be included for support of the, uh, the TPM uh, in production or maintenance department. And the activities included under the office TPM are first the autonomous maintenance for the offices. This is starting with the initial cleaning of the immediate surrounding. Perform the task review for task you are doing. You must review that task whether there is a scope of improvement in the task or not. If there is a scope of improvement then do the improvement project. Then implement the solutions what you get uh, as a result of your uh, improvement. Uh, sustain these improvement or the, uh, implement these solutions. Then summarize the solutions and raise the level of self management. Then uh, do some specific project based, uh, uh, specific projects based uh, improvements such as the reduced lead time for finalizing the accounts, improve the logistics, raise efficiency of purchasing and subcontracting, revamp production management system, support the production management system. Uh, improve the logistics uh, so that the, the products can reach the customer as early as possible by removing the hurdles in the logistics system and uh, uh, raise the efficiency of purchasing so the bill of material can be purchased as soon as possible so that the manufacturing of the product can be started as early as possible and the uh, Similarly, uh, the arrangement of the contracted lab labor uh, according to the requirement for the manufacturing of the product. These arrangements uh, are done for the production department or the maintenance department to support the production and maintenance department. Now come to the last pillar of the TPM which is safety, health and environment. So if they are, if, if all the pillars are very good, uh, very good condition, uh, are in very good condition, but if there are a few accidents in the organization, then the TPM cannot be treated as success for the organization. Therefore, TPM has, uh, TPM has always emphasized the importance of zero accidents and zero pollution. Write the program for zero waste and other environmental improvements across the organization. What are the goals and responsibilities? The goals are achieve and sustain zero accident standard, create healthy, rewarding and pleasing, pleasant workplace. And the responsibilities uh, can be shared by the safety, health and environmental staff, machine operator, assembly line leaders and the quality department. 
and the activities under safety, health, and environment pillar included make a safer equipment so that there could not be any kind of accident on the equipment, make the safer workplace also, improve working environments, soothing environments for the working personnel, that means reduce the noise, vibration and dirt, prevent the pollution, all kinds of pollution, air, water or noise, improve employees health, promote the wholesome safety or health concerns activities across the organization. Now here is the integrated system of eight pillars of TPM and I can show you the first pillar is the focused improvement. This gives the feedback to or support the quality maintenance pillar, the pillar number six. Uh, this also support the pillar number three which is effective maintenance and this also give the feedback to the pillar number four which is the training and development to improve the skills of the operating uh, skills of the operator and other personnel operating personnel or maintenance personnel. So the focus improvement is uh, eliminate losses by prioritizing the projects for continuous improvement in each area. And uh, then come to the pillar number two, this is the autonomous maintenance. This is also supported by the effective maintenance, the third pillar and uh, also supported by the, the fourth pillar training development. According to that, the skills of the operating personnel can be improved and with the help of the improvement skills, developed skills, the operator can handle his machine by himself. So. This, is com this comes under the autonomous maintenance and uh, the third pillar is effective maintenance. The effective maintenance supports the quality maintenance system to achieve the zero defect condition and uh, under the defect maintenance the activities are sterilized failure intervals, extend equipment life, periodically reverse deterioration of the equipment or the parts of the equ equipment then predict the equipment life and this supports the uh, quality maintenance system which is the sixth pillar of the TPM and uh, here is uh, the early management which is the fifth pillar. The pillar number three and pillar number five supporting each other. So if the effective maintenance is good then the early management, management is also good because early management starts from right from the design of the equipment. So if the early management can able to uh, achieve the maintenance prevention activity, maintenance prevention or zero maintenance condition, then the, the maintenance department can uh, able to uh, implement the TPM effectively. So the pillar number three and pillar, pillar number five support each other and the pillar number five also supports the pillar number six which is the quality maintenance system uh, which try to achieve uh, to achieve the zero defect condition. Now the early management send uh, the feedback to the, the fourth pillar which is the training and development and uh, according to that uh, the, the skills and the knowledge of the personnel of the production and maintenance uh, department can be improved with the help of training and development and this pillar supports the autonomous maintenance. So this way all these six pillars are integrated with each other and these two pillars, pillar number seven and pillar number eight, office TPM and safety, health and environmental management system support all these six pillars so that the TPM can be a success for the organization and uh, uh, an ultimate performance level can be achieved with this human machine interaction system. 
this is the integrated system of eight pillars pillars of the TPM. So I hope you can very well understand about the integrated system of the eight pillars of TPM. This is all about uh, the about the eight pillars of the TPM. So here is a recap what you have studied in this video. Focused improvement pillars identifies and eliminates the losses in each area. Autonomous maintenance improves the skills of operator and empower him to take care of the machine by himself or herself. Planned maintenance stabilizes, stabilizes failure intervals and extends the equipment useful life. Training and development assess the current skills of employees and upgrade their skills to do the job in an effective way. Early management starts right from the design of the equipment and manufacturing process simultaneously with the product design. Quality maintenance ensures the zero defects condition for material, machine, method and man or the personnel who is working on the machine. Then the pillar number 7 says office TPM supports production and all other departments for TPM implementation across the organization. Then come to the pillar number 8 which is safety, health and environment pillar and this ensures the zero accident and good health of the employees and zero pollution condition. Uh, zero pollution for uh, air, zero pollution uh, for water, zero pollution from noise. And the last point is with the integration of all eight pillars of TPM, an ultimate performance level can be achieved from the human machine system of the eight pillars of uh, from the eight pillars of TPM. So this is all about uh, about the brief discussion of each pillar of the TPM. There are eight pillars of the TPM, and I have discussed in brief. Uh, each uh, about the each, each pillar of the PPM. So, if you have any question or suggestion, then do write your feedback in comment box. Like this video and share this video among your friends and colleagues. Subscribe Shake Hand with Life the YouTube channel and press the bell icon so you get the notifications for future training videos. Visit www.shakehandwithlife.in and go to bookshelf and to download the course notes in PDF. If you do not find the course notes there, then the notes will soon be uploaded on the website. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.